everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day four of Advent of Code. And today was a really tough one. Once again, I have not been able to solve part two. I only got a right answer to part one. I will still share my ideas with you and my thoughts. And I'm really looking forward to see what you guys thought about this exercise in the comments. Let me know how you solved it, if you got a right answer for part two. Because yeah, I did not. So Advent of Code Day 4 is a word search. We need to find the words Christmas and it's written like X-M-A-S. This is what our input looks like and this is the type of string that we are searching for. We should be able to find Christmas written like this or like this. Oops. I mean like from, from bottom to top or even in the diagonal like this. To solve part one, I wrote a grid traversal algorithm. I think there are several different ways to solve this. At the beginning, I was trying to use a DFS, so a depth first search algorithm, but I, I think I forgot how to write recursive algorithms and <laughs> it wasn't really working, so I did it this way instead. So this is how I did it. As per usual, we have a function that reads in the input and this time I put the input into a grid. So I created a matrix out of my input because I wanna be able to do a traversal through the matrix. The keyword I'm looking for is Xmas. Then I have a few helper variables like the count and the row in the columns, which are just the length of the number of rows and columns I have on my grid. I created this helper function to validate the direction I was going in, but let's check it later. Let's start on line 22. So I do this nested loop here to go through my grid and to check every position there is. And then I created this array which contains the directions that I want to take in order to check every character in the word puzzle. And because we need to check every spot around our character, that means that at every instance we need to check eight different positions and that's why we have eight different tuples in the directions array. And then I go through the directions and I check if it's a valid direction that I can go into because we can't really go beyond the grid. And this is why I created this is valid direction helper function, which takes in the column, the row and the position we want to go to based on the direction. In the helper function, I want to check two things. I want to check if the letter that I'm finding at the next spot is a letter that I'm interested in, if whether it's part of my keywords. And I also want to check if I am within bounds of the grid. So that is what we're doing here. We're kind of looping through our, our keyword, which is Xmas. We check what would be the next row and the next column. And then we do a simple check that we are not out of bounds. And I also check that the next letter that I'm finding in my grid would be a word that I'm interested in. Because if none of these are true, then I want to return false, meaning that it's not a valid direction to go into. If this is true, then we can increase the count because that means that we have found all the letters of our keyword in the grid and we should therefore increase the count because we have found the word. And once you have done this for all of your rows and columns, you can at the end return the count of the words which you spotted. So I did this and I obtained a correct value for my input file. Now let's talk about part two because I have beef with part two. I've never done Advent of Code before, so I don't know if it's normal for them to get this hard with like in part two, things change a bit. In part two, we're looking for a cross pattern of the letters M-A-S in a row, which makes it complicated, I think. I remember one time sort of solving a lead code problem that was similar to this. I can't really remember how I did it back then. My brain was definitely trained back then because I was in the lead code grind, you know, back in the days, but yeah. For part two, I wanted to basically hard code the positions, like the coordinates of an X, and use this to determine where are the right spots that I would expect the letters to be in. So I created this keyword positions array, which has the coordinates of the cross, and I created my keyword variable, which is MAS. So as we did in part one, I'm looping through the grid, and I consider the directions one, 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 minus one, because this is basically a diagonal move, sort of a diagonal move downwards and move upwards. And I kept my is valid direction function to check the validity. Now my validity function, I think this is where things are not quite right. I am looping through the target length, which is 
basically the cross because I want to check every position of the cross and then I'm getting the keyword position tuple out of it. So my X and Y are basically whatever tuple of my keyword positions we're at. And I check what is the next row and the next column that I need to verify based on this information. So I'll calculate X times uh, the delta row, so how much I'm walking in X and I add that to my current row and I do the same for my column. However, this check here, I mean, the out of bounds check makes sense. This would still remain the same as before, but I think that I'm fumbling the logic here to verify the letters. I'm checking if my grid letter would be my keyword in position X or my keyword in position Y, which kind of makes sense, but at the same time, yeah, this is not returning. <laughs> A correct result. If you want to see, I'm getting, what am I getting? Zero. It's literally saying that we have zero Christmas tree crosses, which I'm sure is not the correct answer, but whatever. I do need to go to sleep because I need to go to work tomorrow and I need to go into the office. So I'm going to leave it for now and I will upload this video tomorrow. And I really want to read your feedback and I want to see what I'm doing wrong. So please let me know. That is all for Advent of Code Day 4. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for Day 5. Bye!